Welcome to another episode of Fighting Weight. I'm Jay Adams, and we do have a great show in store for you today. The founder of the Dr. Delray Detox and Weight Loss System, Dr. Delray Messer. Uh, so glad to have you with us, Delray. Thank you very much. <laughs> you were an athlete at the national level, and you were feeling great. You were performing as an athlete at a very high level, and then something went wrong. Tell us about yourself and your journey and how you get into the health field. Well, I was always very healthy, no symptoms whatsoever. I grew up as an athlete. I played basketball, volleyball, cross-country track in high school, and then excelled at track and cross-country. So I decided to do that um, on a full-ride scholarship at NDSU in Fargo, North Dakota. Don't ask me why I chose to run in the coldest place on the planet, but <laughs> I did, probably because I'm from there. Um, and things were going great, and I got very, very sick. Um, I was living in black mold, and I found out that a lot of these toxins can affect us at a cellular level. I mean, this is coming from somebody that had zero symptoms whatsoever, and then suddenly lost literally my health and my life within a couple months time. I had horrible severe migraines, um, chronic digestive problems. I was so fatigued that I couldn't get up in the morning and, and that was very unlike me. I was a 5 a.m. riser. I was super, super healthy and everything just came crashing down uh, within two months time. And, and ironically, I gained a, about 25 pounds of weight and I didn't do anything with diet and exercise differently. So that was something that was very shocking to me because here I am, you know, eating healthy, exercising, and I'm gaining all this weight and I noticed a lot of it was water weight or inflammation and when I talk to people and speak across the country on this subject a lot of people tell me that they feel just like they're inflamed or bloated and toxic those are some of the symptoms or the the adjectives that they use when they describe their symptoms and I tell them you know I know exactly how you feel that's exactly how I felt when I was going through a lot of my health problems so long story short I found out that I was living in black mold um, I had a little girl at the time, she's about a year old, and she developed really bad allergies and asthma and digestive problems. So I sought out you know, specialists because obviously I needed to get myself well as my daughter. And what I found is that a lot of doctors just didn't know a lot about this subject. They said, well, you have these symptoms like horrible migraines, so let's do some testing, um, further testing on your fatigue. So I ended up on what I like to call the medical treadmill. You know how you're running and you get a test after test after test, doctor after doctor, and the only answers you're getting are either A, you're crazy because nothing's wrong with you, there's nothing wrong on your blood work, or B, if it's bad enough, go home and take medications for the rest of your life. Or here you go, give your da daughter allergy shots. And I just was not going to do that. So I said, I need to seek out a specialist. And ironically, I believe in divine <laughs> energy and divine intervention. And sure enough, somebody showed up in my life, and he was a cellular toxicity specialist. So he started asking me questions about my environment. Well, I had never thought of that. I didn't know about my apartment with black mold. I didn't know about growing up on a farm and, and growing up on a 20,000 acre farm, running those country roads with crop planes above me, mm. spraying pesticides. So I had high, high levels of arsenic and lead in our well water. So all of these things combined, and not only that, we talked earlier about the chemicals that women use right? The amount of chemicals that we have in our personal care products, household cleaners. In fact, by the time a woman leaves her home in the morning, she uses on average 515 different chemicals. Wow. From her shampoo to makeup to skincare. So these were things that I really was completely uneducated about. I had no idea. And when I speak, I tell people that toxicity is kind of like a bathtub or a bucket filling up with water. It's only a matter of time before what happens it overflows. Right. So it's our environment and the problem with toxicity is you can't say that this one apple with pesticides in it is going to cause a migraine headache. Right? And you can't say that the Glade plug-in next to you at work or the mold that be, could be coming from the vents in your home or workplace. We can't pinpoint just one thing as a problem or how about the casings of electronics or some of the things that they spray on mattresses and kids clothing now all of these flame retardants we can't say those one things are going to cause this health problem 
But the problem is, Jay, is that it is the bioaccumulation over time of these small exposures that add up to be a big deal in the long run. That's why a lot of companies get away with it. You know, the industrial companies can get away with all of these ingredients and chemicals because we can't say that just one is causing this. So it's very interesting. It's such an epidemic and you know everybody knows this intuitively. They you know we, the, the country's falling apart at the seams health-wise and yet we because of this isolation model that you're talking about when you isolate one of these chemicals and one of these toxic substances that the you know that these industries are putting into our homes they can't they say well you can't prove it it can't be tracked but it is an accumulation and you know when I look at how many people are sick and I, I went through this same exact thing I know exactly what you're talking about I, I got sick it, it was a, an accumulation and when I would go to the doctors it was always that it's all in your head um, you don't know what you're talking about we can't see anything so there's nothing wrong with you here go take this pill but intuitively I got that the pill wasn't gonna fix me and that I needed to do something and ironically I had the same kind of divine intervention type of person I was actually walking on the beach feeling pretty sorry for myself and a woman who must have been 187 years old <laughs> sweet little little old lady came up to me and we started chatting and she had a little health food store on Gulf Boulevard in Reddington Beach and she took me in and started teaching me about herbs and you know about uh, probiotics and detoxing and you know it was uh, it changed my life it changed my whole understanding of health and sometimes it's not what you take in but what you get out of your system and that's Absolutely. one of your specialties is detoxing and it's a fascinating subject uh, cellular detoxing and one of the things you said earlier that really struck me was that um, inflammation and toxicity are related and we know that inflammation is a huge problem can you tell us how inflammation and toxicity are related Absolutely. Well, inflammation is one of the leading causes, if not the leading cause of chronic disease in our country right now. And inflammation is one of those funny things because it actually can be good for us in the short term. For example, it's, it, it's an appropriate response is what I'm trying to say. Our body is always giving us an appropriate response to some kind of stressor in our environment. And that's just looking at health in a different way. And just to pre-frame this, when we talk about why I chose to go into a natural healthcare profession versus the medical profession, it's not because I don't respect that. You and I were talking about how amazing it is if we're in a car accident, which I just saw just, just before the show here. You know, thank goodness we have these amazing emergency um, care people to take care of us when we're in need. Or if your blood pressure is 200 over, you know, one, 100, don't come to me. <laughs> right. Go to somebody that you need to get something at that time um, and get it taken care of but if you want to prevent what's going on in our country and raise yourself and your kids healthy that is not the system that's working it's it's failing and it's failing miserably and the reason why is we don't have the right paradigm we look at our body like it's supposed to break down you know oh we have a family history of cancer diabetes stroke heart disease so we're destined to get it in fact, that's not the case. We know genetics play a very, very little role in our health long term, but our lifestyle choices are what are going to ch turn our genes on or off, and we are in control of that. Now that we know inflammation is the leading cause of chronic disease in our country, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, stroke, all of these things that kill the most amount of Americans, we're linking it back to inflammation. Well, what is it? If you go sprain your ankle on a curb right now, you step off the curb, you twist your ankle, what happens to it? it? Swells up and gets red. It does. It gets all swollen. That's inflammation. So your brain is sending these little chemical messengers to that area in your body. They're called cytokines to heal it. And that's appropriate. Thank goodness we have that because you don't want to go walk around and destroy your ankle um, after you've just hurt it. So that's your body giving you an appropriate response. Well, what's happening is because of the amount of chemicals we're exposed to, the food and processed food that we're consuming, what's in our water and all the chemicals around us, we have this low-grade systemic inflammation going on in our whole entire body. In fact, that is what's causing the breakdown of our body at an earlier and earlier age. I mean, we look at kids now. We look at kids and how they are the sickest generation 
on the planet that has ever existed. Did you know that kids that were born in the year 2000, that, that's the first year that kids will not outlive their parents? Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Mm. It is. It's it's, and it's due to inflammation. When you were a child, did you know another child with a peanut allergy? No. Nope. Allergies in general? No, I didn't know anyone who was allergic to anything. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> or did the teacher have chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia? No such words. Back Rest, restless leg syndrome? Nothing. Of course not. These are names. All of these diseases are basically a label. They're a little printed label for symptoms that people are experiencing because of raised inflammation in their body. So it really is as simple as this. What causes inflammation and how do we avoid that? Because if we know and studies are showing, this isn't just Dr. Del Rey's research. <laughs> this is the New England Journal of Medicine, the Lancet. These are the biggest journals in the world that are telling us these are, this is the cause of chronic disease. So one of the things that raises inflammation the fastest are heavy metals and toxins and chemicals. In fact, Dr. Oz, I don't know if you watch Dr. Oz, I am a fan because I love the education of that show and just how it opens up with the visuals of this communication. Um, he was talking about how there's heavy metals in even organic products now. Wow. Because if these organic products are coming from overseas, for example, brown rice protein, you say you have some of the highest levels of different heavy metals. So heavy metals can cause a chain reaction of inflammation in our body. I grew up around lead well water and lead on the farm. So I had very high levels of lead. I had four amalgam fillings. We know amalgam fillings in our mouth, the silver fillings. Right. They're not silver. Do you know what they are? Mercury. Exactly. And this is a very touchy subject. It's one of those things that can go both ways. Because I have a brother that's a dentist. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Really paradise. The dinner yeah. table. I can imagine Christmas. the dinner table in North Dakota there. Absolutely. <laughs> Christmas is a very interesting time. <laughs> we all just choose to disagree and love each other. <laughs> that's nice. That's nice. But the problem with that is no matter what, when you have a metal in your mouth, if you drink something hot, if you're chewing, it's a constant leaching of these things. Now, we don't have to even argue whether it's healthy or not. We know that it's not healthy for us to have a metal in our body that's leaching into our cells. Um, and not only that, avoiding all of these um, other sources of metals like canned foods. Canned foods have high levels of different metals as well as different BPAs, which are byproducts of plastics. And we'll go over some of the toxins. Am I going to have to my organic chicken breast from Costco? <laughs> no, oh. I think you're good there. Okay. Um, they have yes. these great cans. It's perfect for traveling. It's organic chicken breast from Costco, and they're so convenient. Yes, as long as it's and canned food, I really try and tell people, as long as it's infrequent, then you're okay. If it's a daily thing, multiple times a day, then we're going to get in trouble. Right. Um, but the problem with inflammation is it's, is it's happening at a cellular level. And when I speak, I, I, I know that doctor means teacher, correct? So yeah. if you're going to a doctor that's not willing to teach you how to be healthy, you're not going to the right person. So when I teach, I teach the fact that we're made out of cells, aren't we? About 76 trillion cells. So how healthy we are is how healthy we are at a cellular level. Most people don't remember this. This is eighth grade bi biology. I don't know if you can picture your teacher talking about the nucleus and the mitochondria of your cells, uh, but I, I can picture it. <laughs> Mrs. Beggs. <laughs> right. My, so, oh, Mr. Flato. Nice. I, I know. Everybody <laughs> remembers. It's quite funny. <laughs> Um, our cells have a lipid um, bilayer, means two layers, a bilipid membrane. So there's two layers of fat, which is why we are lacking in our country probably the most nutri um, essential nutrient, and that's good fats in our diet. The worst thing that we ever did as a country was in the 1970s when we decreased the amount of fat in food. What did we do? We replaced it with carbohydrates and sugar. Yeah. And artificial sweeteners. So that was the worst thing that we ever did. We if we would have left the fat in food, you're much better eating off a whole or eating a whole egg than eating just the egg white. You're much better eating fatty foods that are good fats like coconut oil and avocado because all of these have essential fatty acids that are very very important for that cell membrane. And actually it's made out of cholesterol too. That's another huge myth that if, if you want a great book on heart disease, it's called The Great Cholesterol Myth. Everyone should read it. 
Who's the I could do, do you remember the author's name? Um, it's Two Doctors. I can't okay. remember right off the top of my head because I borrowed it to so many people. Um, I lent, <laughs> well, I lent I mean, it to so many people. If you put in the great cholesterol myth into Google, I mean, it'll come up. That's a specific name, yeah. Yes. If anybody is on statins or cholesterol-lowering drugs, you might be floored, absolutely floored, about some of the research that's coming out about them. The mm -hmm. side effects, the fact that they really don't work to decrease your risk of a heart disease. Because heart disease, or heart attack, excuse me, heart disease and um, stroke have everything to do with inflammation and high blood pressure. So when taking a look at you know all of these things added together, we have to look at how inflammation is affecting us at a cellular level. How healthy your cells are is how healthy and how easily nutrients can get into the cell and waste products can get out because if you have a nice it's called cellular fluidity can you picture something going in and out of that cell very very easily yes what happens when you have toxins and chemicals they they have an affinity or they're like a magnet they're attracted to fat in our bodies they act, we're like sponges so you know picture a sponge soaking up with water and getting bigger that's what happens to our cell membranes and also our fat cells. We can accumulate fat very, very quickly, especially along our midsection, if we are exposed to a high amount of chemicals. Take, for example, when I was living in black mold. How did I gain 25 pounds doing nothing different with diet and exercise? This is fascinating. Yeah, it I'm starting to really get a picture of this. Absolutely. So these toxins store in our fat cells and in our cell membrane, and we bioaccumulate them with time. Now, there are some that are, I call them little stinkers because they don't leave the body very easily. And pesticides can be really, really tough to get out of the body. But there's good news. Um, there's a great book called Slow Death by Rubber Duck. It, it's an amazing book written, and actually I believe there's a documentary now, um, two Canadian uh, journalists, they set out to research the chemical exposure in our households. So what are we around that's raising chemical toxicity in our body the most? In fact, CNN did a special on this, and it's actually j some of the things that you would never imagine, like rubber ducks from China. When our kids play with them in the bathtub, the bathtub water is what? Hot. Hot. So what happens to all of these heavy metals in these plastic toys when they're in the tub? Wow. They leach into the water and then the water and then the body and the skin is the largest organ in the body and the skin absorbs it. And the skin is readily absorbing it because it's warm at that time warm. and the pores are open. Wow. And our children are extremely susceptible to this cellular toxicity because they have a lower body weight for the amount of exposure that they're exposed to. So it, I tell people, here's the thing. It, you can get extremely overwhelmed by all of the things that you're exposed to on a daily basis. Uh, you know, we talk about pesticides. We talk about the personal care products, canned food, household cleaners. It can get overwhelming. So I like to take my patients and um, clients through a step-by-step -step process of trying to eliminate and replace some of these things in your home. And what's exciting is that usually you save money because cleaning can be as simple as vinegar and some lemon essential oils. That's all I use for cleaning. Wow, nice. Absolutely. You know, I'm thinking of the I'm thinking of the household because you have us in the home right now, and I'm I'm thinking of a couple different things. Um, one, and I don't know if this is your area, so forgive me if it isn't, but um, we, I, I think of my house and we're like wired to the max. You know, I, I'm not a techie, but I have to have a lot of high tech stuff in my house because of my television shows, my MMA shows on TV. So we have all kinds of wiring and Wi Fi this and, you know, Mac Daddy, cellular this. I know there's a ton of stuff going around in my house. I mean, how bad is that in terms of toxicity? Um, because I've been hearing we really do, we should be shutting off our Wi-Fi. It's really not good for us. Well, that's ironic you say that because I just had a new router put in my house with some extenders on it last night. And just this thought in my head, I go, I just don't know if this is great because I do everything online now and I need to have a great online connection. And I'm going through my head, all of the people that are saying, oh, it's totally fine, there's nothing wrong with it, but we know better. We have to know that our bodies are energy and electricity. 
And there is no way that all of these Wi-Fi and towers and all of these things can't affect us at a cellular level. Um, I have a friend that's a biomedical engineer, and he swears that the amount of cancer that's happening right now is because of cell phone towers. And, you know, we can talk about all these things that we're exposed to and what's the number one thing to change. I think it's really trying to minimize all of them. Yeah. Because if we try and focus on all of it, like I said, we get so overwhelmed and yeah, we can get into through. the whole conspiracy theory side of things. <laughs> I know. And you know what? It's funny. You and I were talking offline about this. One of my big revelations is I'm not going to hate and I'm not going to assume these people are trying to poison me. I'm going to assume they're good people who are just like you and I are, are trying to provide for our family. They're trying to, uh, you know, conduct an honest business and they're trying to serve the public just like anyone else. So what I would rather do is just focus on the positive and focus on what I can do. And yes, I am going to choose organic. I'm not going to put down the companies that are putting the poisons in the food. I'm not going to put them down because they think that they're creating greater yield for us. I'm not going to assume that they're trying to poison my kids, but I'm sure not going to poison my kids. And so I'm just going to joyfully be grateful that I have access to organic foods. And I'm going to tell everybody that they should eat organic because I'm not going to keep that to myself. And But I'm also, if someone has to eat, you know, uh, conventionally grown food, I'm not going to put it down and I'm not going to freak them out. I'm just going to say, as soon as you can, go over to organic. Exactly. And, you know, that way I'm not dragging myself down in negativity either. Agreed. And that's, I think that's why I get such an amazing positive response when I speak is that I really try and focus on the good. And we talked about that, paving a new way. Something that's great about organic too because that is something that comes up all the time whenever I speak. It's, well, I can't afford that. You know, it's going to break my budget. It's extremely expensive to choose all organic foods. And guess what? I totally agree with you, which is why the Environmental Working Group came out with a list and they come out with a new list every single year called the Dirty Dozen List. If you're not aware of this list, you can actually sign up for their email list and they will send it to you for free and they keep you posted on a lot of the things that have chemical exposure in our daily lives. That's why I like to stay up to date on a lot of that information. This year and most years, what we focus on is choosing organic food that that does not that has a soft shell, meaning blueberries, apples, peaches, nectarines, all of these bell peppers, these things that can soak up pesticides that have a soft outer coating, those are the things to choose organic. And the reason why is because they save you, if you choose those foods, they save you on 80% of pesticide residue by just following that list. Wow. That is a huge percentage. So if you know, you're thinking in your head right now, you're a mom or you're a dad, and wow, how am I going to do this for my family? Just start there. Start eating your berries and your salad and your leafy greens. Just look at that dirty dozen list and choose those organic, and you will save on 80% of pesticide residue. Because think about it. If you buy an organic watermelon or an avocado or honeydew or something like that, they have a huge rind. So it'll at least protect you from some of those things, whereas berries are right next to the ground where they grow, and they're going to soak up all of those pesticides. And you and I know about GMO foods, genetically modified. You know, the jury is still out, but I believe it's closing in very, very quickly on how these foods can definitely alter our genetics. We talk about autoimmune diseases all the time, and this isn't something that just happened to us. There is a reason why our immune systems are reacting the way that they are and start reacting to our very own cells in a negative way. And I truly believe that it has a lot to do with that. So corn and soy, you know, most of the times, 95% of the times are genetically modified. So those are some of the foods that I avoid. And obviously processed foods are, are we have to avoid them altogether because of the amount of artificial ingredients and things like that in these foods. Absolutely. We talked about how toxicity creates inflammation in the body and how that affects us. How does toxicity um, affect our hormones? Because we know that the hormones are so important for increasing our lean body mass to fat ratio. How does toxicity affect those hormones? Well, it's interesting because for a long time, you know, there's no way that somebody would relate toxicity to their weight. Um, if you would go to a doctor or you go to a nutritionist, you sat down next to them, 
um, or you brought your overweight child to them, they would say to you, well, if you want to lose weight, it's as simple as what? Eating less and exercising more. Right. We've all heard it. Create a caloric deficit. Right. Well, that's not working anymore. And there's a reason why. There's a missing piece of the puzzle, and that is toxic exposure. Because toxins do affect our hormones. And this isn't, like I said, just my research. Actually, somebody that I is an idol of mine that I look up to greatly is Dr. Sanjay Gupta from CNN. Right the chief medical correspondent for CNN, he really started to open the door to looking at how these chemicals are affecting not only our health, but also our weight and, the re and also our kids' health. And the reason why is he has three beautiful little girls. Short story, I saw him in the Atlanta airport about two weeks ago, and I, it, it was like I saw Brad Pitt or something. I'm not even kidding you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how big of a science geek I am. I'm an absolute geek. You are a nerd. I, I, I read PubMed every morning. I read all these journals because I need to stay up on what's going on to be able to educate my clients about it. So he's in line right in front of me, and I'm in the TSA approved line. So as he has this baseball hat on, suddenly he looks over to the side because he's waiting for his wife and three girls. And I go, oh, my gosh, are you Dr. Sanjay Gupta? And he goes, yes. <laughs> and I go, Ruby. oh, my God. I go, oh my gosh, I'm such a science geek too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I go, well, I just wanted to thank you so much for talking about toxicity and how it, it's really playing a role in our health now. I'm a mom. I have two little girls, and it's extremely important to me, and I went through you know, a personal health struggle because of it. And so we got to talking, and he's absolutely incredible. But some of the research that he talks about is how – these byproducts of plastics, so for example, BPAs, these byproducts of plastics are hormone mimickers. They mimic hormones in our body and can cause estrogen dominance. And we know that estrogen dominance can lead to what type of cancer most of the time? Well, um, breast, breast, breast cancer, yeah. Absolutely. So we're showing how these byproducts are really affecting us at a cellular level and accumulating and causing DNA damage. Um, then we talk about different products like PFOAs are, are byproducts of Teflon. So nonstick pans and coating are very, very hazardous to our health. So anytime we have you know, our heat on high when we're cooking dinner and we, those fumes are, are, are circulating around our home, they're extremely toxic. So all the cookware that I use is stainless steel or glass cookware. Very, very important to get all Tupperware, plastics, anything out of your home. And it's difficult because I know we grew up in the you know Tupperware party age. Most of the moms that I talk to and work with say, well, I have cupboards full of Tupperware. What do I do with these? I'm like, well, throw them or give them to a relative you don't like. <laughs> you know, the challenge with Tupperware is that Tupperware actually plays very well into the people who are trying to be healthy now and who travel and who make big batches of food, you know, that's that's mm -hmm. one of one of our modalities is you make big batches of food on one particular day that you can now eat throughout the week. And you can, you know, like I make big batches of lentils or beans or rice or legumes or, or chicken breasts and then I add in veggies throughout the day. It's very hard to travel and stay healthy if you don't use the Tupperware model. I love Pyrex. And if you go online, they have lots of different um, sizes of different Pyrex dishes now. So there's one cup. I, I actually have one in my purse right now. One cup um, serving size of a lot of those. And you can put it in a really well-coated um, lunch bag. So I've never broken one, and I travel all across the country. So I can give you some seal? of those. Do the Pyrex do these bottles? Absolutely. They yep. seal. They've okay. never leaked. Never huh. leaked. It has a great seal on them. So that's just some of the tips that I've learned as I've, I've traveled. And, and back to the hormone thing and how these toxins are affecting our hormones, because of those little things that we're doing, so say we're microwaving plastic, we're cooking with Teflon, um, we sleep on a memory foam mattress, which, by the way, can be one of the most toxic things that you're exposed to. In fact, I have a lot of clients. Uh, one got a new memory foam mattress, and she was having all of these different symptoms. And I said, well, what changed? What changed in your daily life? What was different? And she said, well, I got a, a new memory foam mattress. 
And another friend of ours, he started experiencing really bad allergies and coughing and sneezing. And I said, was there something new that changed? And he said, I got a new carpet just a week ago. I said, well, is that when all of your symptoms started? He said, absolutely. That's exactly when it started. Wow. And, yes. you know, I know this is real. What you're saying is real because this, like it happened to me, like things that never used to bother me now drive me nuts. I was over my, uh, I stayed over at a friend's house and, you know, went to bed and there was like a fragrance on the pillow, on the, on the pillowcase, which I'm sure he did to, uh, you know, be nice. <laughs> nice, just an awesome guy. He's like one of my best friends. So he wanted it to be like a really pleasant experience. But my eyes started watering, my throat started closing up, and you know, my wife was like, What's wrong? What's wrong? I said, I can't, I've got to get rid of these pillows. We ended up putting towels over the pillows, and that helped a lot. So, like, that's real. Like, it really happens. I'm, and every year, like, you know, when you use that water into the bowl metaphor, it's so accurate for me because every year these sensitivities get worse for me. And, you know, I am getting to the point, I've never done a detox, but I'm getting to the point now where I know I'm going to do one because it's now to the point where I know I've got to get this stuff out of me. It's really bothering me. My throat is sore most of the time now. And it's, you know, so I didn't mean to interrupt your flow, but I just wanted to reinforce, at least for me, that's been my experience is that, yeah, it gets worse. It does. Yeah, and and do that's, and actually research shows that about 25% of us are more chemically sensitive. So there are some people that can be on a plane and around somebody that has perfume and cologne on and be totally fine. I'm not one of those people. If I'm around Glade plugins or air fresheners in a car, somebody that has perfume or cologne on, I can get an instant migraine this fast. And it's because we are more chemically sensitive. But because of the amount of chemical exposure we're under now, we find that the majority of children are chemically sensitive because of this bathtub analogy. And one quick note, the reason why kids are born sicker and sicker is because about 232 different chemicals, and this is tested, can be found in the umbilical cord blood of mom being mm. passed to baby. So baby is now starting with their back buckets or bathtubs half full of chemicals. And now we talk about the vaccine schedule being so much more than what it was when we were children. And that's a whole other subject we could talk years and years about, yeah. about all these different interventions that are done with children that weren't done with us. We talk about antibacterial hand soaps, and kids are doused in this stuff on a daily basis. I used to eat dirt. I mean, we, we yeah. were on the farm and our immune systems were completely titanium because we exposed ourselves. And my daughter just got a little cold when we traveled and I'm like, yay, she's building her immune system. And other moms look at me like I'm crazy, but our bodies are designed to get sick once in a while. Your kids can get sick and you can do nothing, zero. Don't put anything, it, you know, any type of drug in their body because it's going to suppress what their immune system is trying to learn. And these things are just important. It's important for our body to be able to function the way it's supposed to. We try and do something and we think that our body's breaking down when we have a fever or anything going on. Um, and we talk about the chemicals and, we're, that, and what we're exposed to because really what they're doing is they're playing a very, very important role in us being overweight, um, adults, but as well as children. Because when I look at somebody that's overweight now, it, I look at inflammation and I look at their chemical toxicity exposure and they look at me completely different when they come in and see me in my office because they say wow this is the first time somebody is not telling me that it's my fault that I'm in the closet eating too much food that I'm lazy because I'm not exercising enough and children especially I go these kids are not eating massive amounts of food now don't get me wrong we do have bigger portion sizes now than we have before I understand that and we might be a little bit lazier we like to sit down on the couch you know versus going out to exercise but you can't tell me that these things are not playing an important role so have you heard of the hormones called leptin and adiponectin before um, I've heard of leptin and I know that someone has just written a book about literally the whole book is on leptin so that yeah. tells me it is a pivotal hormone uh, very important so yeah let's let's touch upon that and Absolutely. I just want to be sensitive to your time I know you have a patient in 10 minutes so I'm thinking maybe we'll spend 
a, you know, three or four minutes on leptin, and before we get out, if you could just give us some anti-inflammatory foods that we could sort of focus on next time we go to an organic grocery store, uh, right. that would be wonderful. And again, you don't have to be at an organic uh, grocery store, um, but definitely try to stay in the produce and, and vegetable section if you can. Um, but I would like to focus on those two before we get out. So yeah, leptin, let her rip. Awesome. Okay, so we used to think that fat was just a storage unit. So we would eat too much, not exercise enough, and we would store and accumulate fat. That was the theory. Um, for a very long time it's been the theory, and actually some people still think that's the only way to lose weight. I have a trainer that I have been battling with because I don't know if you heard of the Twinkie diet, but this <laughs> professor went on this Twinkie diet and he still lost weight by eating Twinkies. Here's the thing. No matter what, every food we eat has a hormonal effect on our body. Fat is actually a metabolic organ, meaning it secretes hormones. We didn't know this years ago. We didn't know that fat could actually secrete a hormone that travels to our brain to tell us that we're either hungry or we're full. So kind of like a gas gauge in your car. Picture the gas gauge you know, empty or full. That's telling you you need to fill up or you're empty, correct? Right. So that's exactly what happens in our body. If our hormones are working correctly, we eat you know, the proper portion size of food, we get that signal that we're full and we should stop eating. How many of us think we have a broken gas gauge? <laughs> right. And everybody usually raises their hand because we usually overeat. Or we don't eat often enough during the day and we overindulge at nighttime and we overeat and continually eat during the night. That's a lot of my clients actually. Um, the reason why that gauge is broken is because leptin be can become dysregulated or not work properly when we have toxicity in our body. So these hormones can dysregulate leptin and also a poor diet of processed foods dysregulate these hormones that are supposed to tell us we're full. And it also controls our cravings for certain foods. Also controls how well we burn body fat. So these are three pivotal points on how efficient we are at burning fat. And I also tell people that you can be become very efficient at storing fat. Picture, you know, Mr. Brown Bear in the middle of Alaska when he's hibernating. Does he eat, need to eat very much to keep all of his fat stores for the winter? Oh, when he's hibernating, he's not eating anything. Exactly, but that is what's happening to a lot of us as well. Because a lot of people aren't even eating a lot of food. They just become so efficient at storing fat. So we need to become fat burners instead of fat storers. Does that make sense? Yeah, we want to become fat inefficient. Exactly. We're horrible at storing fat. <laughs> exactly. I really want to fail at that. I want to be <laughs> a miserable failure at storing fat. Exactly. So detoxing at a cellular level, binding and pulling those toxins out of your body, providing your body with an anti-inflammatory diet, and doing the right type of exercise, which is high-intensity training, not just long bouts of cardio, gets your body to become an, an efficient fat burner. And that is you know, regulating your hormones and doing it the right way. In fact, when you get your hormones right, you will no longer have food cravings. People are floored by the fact that, wow, I used to dream about chocolate. I used to think about all these foods every single day, and I don't even have an ounce of a craving for them. That's because you've become an efficient fat burner. Mm. Just a few minutes left. I know that everybody's sitting on the edge of their seat wondering what these anti-inflammatory foods are. What is the biohack? I, I really want to take advantage of this whole leptin connection. How do, we, how do we get these hormones to become inefficient at storing fat so that they're saying, hey, you don't, we don't need any more calories? What are the biohacks in terms of anti-inflammatory foods? The most important thing that you do when you choose what to eat is to think about not releasing insulin from your body, from your pancreas. Insulin is a fat storage hormone, and, and leptin can dis get dysregulated when we have a lot of insulin being released. So what raises insulin in our body? Sugar. Processed sugar is the most important thing, and obviously artificial sweeteners, because we now know they do the same thing as sugar. It's the most important thing to eliminate from your diet. So always eating a balanced diet that has proper proteins, 
carbohydrates, and we're going to talk about just shortly what are good carbohydrates versus bad, because there is a huge difference, and then good fats. So having that proper balance is very important. You will feel full, and you will have tons of energy. So for example, what would you do for a breakfast? If you had berries, because they're full of antioxidants, they're definitely something to include in your daily diet, but make sure that they are organic, because once again, they have the soft shell. Berries, um, a lean protein, maybe you have some cage-free eggs, free-range organic cage-free eggs, because they're full of protein, and you actually can eat the yolk, because they have amazingly good fats in them, and maybe a little slice of avocado with that. Maybe you have some gluten-free oatmeal, um, with a little scoop of protein powder in there because you're in a big hurry with some walnuts. Those are a proper pairing of good proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Now there's bad carbs. You have your white bread, white rice, white pasta, but now there's also carbs that we think are healthy for us. We talked about this, wheat bread, whole grain bread, whole grain crackers, all of these things that we think are healthy, but you turn around and read the label and it says enriched white flour, enriched wheat flour, and these things will spike your blood sugar faster than a Snickers candy bar. Mm. So bear, it really is. And I have a book, and it comes with an anti-inflammatory food list. So, you know, that's something that we can, I, I can maybe share the ebook version with you, and you can share that for your listeners, um, and that would be a great option for them to just get started on eating a healthy diet. So berries are number one, and obviously green leafy vegetables, as we all know, are so important. Kale is one of the most amazing superfoods, but it's very bitter, so people have a tough time eating it. So a lot of the recipes that I do, um, and actually on my website, I'm in my kitchen making things, and that's why people come to my website to learn how to eat healthy foods and how to make them taste good, um, because kale can be absolutely amazing in, in a, um, my protein powder, in a fit shake in the morning. It tastes just like green lemonade. And people say, yeah, right, kale. <laughs> but it tastes incredible. So you have your, your really strong antioxidants. Fruits and vegetables, very, very important. And then as far as meats go, choosing the correct, correct type of meats, no chemicals, no hormones, no antibiotics, all of those things are very important for meat. Buying it locally would be great, making sure it's grass-fed, grass-finished free range, all of those things. And then as far as our fats go, we can get that from coconut oil and avocados and raw nuts and seeds because heating things will denature them, which is why making sure things are raw or uh, extra virgin coconut oil or um, olive oil is very important. Got it. Well, I do want to be sensitive to your 5 o'clock. There's literally like 80% more that I wanted to get to. It shows you how... <laughs> how amazingly detailed and complicated the human body is because we spent a good solid hour and we went at, at this hard and there's so much more to touch upon but you've given us such a great foundational basis to start on some really good biohacks especially learning about you know the different types of foods that are functional and anti-inflammatory plus giving us a, a good grounding in all of the toxic materials that are out there uh, Dr. Delray if people want to find out more about you and about your uh, detox program and your philosophy where would they go? drdelraydetox.com so d-r-d-e-l-r-a-e detox.com and then my training website with workouts and videos on recipes and workouts is fit the number four life formula.com what a true pleasure being with you and you know I, I've been sort of debating about whether to say this or not and I'm gonna for anyone who is actually listening to this like on iTunes or Stitcher Definitely check out the video podcast as well because Dr. Delray is easy on the eyes. <laughs> Thank you. Forgive me, doctor, but you are very Thank easy you. on the eyes, fellas. It's worth tuning in, and it's a very pleasant experience and very knowledgeable as well. Dr. Delray Messer, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day, and I hope to be back soon. <laughs> yes. Oh, I would be thrilled if you would come Great. back. Great. Absolutely. Honored. We'll thank follow you. up. Thank you, Delray. Yeah. Bye. I'm Jay Adams. Thank you for joining us in our quest to go right at life, clear-headed and shredded. We'll see you next time.